Welcome back. I am Leo Zimborski with PH Prescription. What are doctors recommend? I had just did a video last week that we posted on social media about the train derailment that happened in East Palestine, uh, Ohio, with all the chemicals that leaked into the ground. And we're going to talk today on how to, how how these problems happen and how we can clean it up. Here's some of the chemical plants that uh, I personally worked in. Um, and these these are both in New Jersey. This is uh, DuPont Chambers Works here on the New Jersey side of the Delaware Memorial Bridge. I just lived a few miles up the road, so it wasn't a long ride for me to get to work. Uh, and then up the river, there was Monsanto. And Monsanto is the, the chemical company that makes glyphosate, and uh, which is Roundup. And so this stuff gets dumped into these rivers. That's why this is the ninth most toxic river in the world, the Delaware River is. Uh, and there's chemical plants all up and down uh, the waterway here on the Delaware on both sides. We used to tease and call it the DuPont River because it was full of DuPont chemicals. What are we really exposed to, right? Toxic chemical manufacturers such as Monsanto DuPont just wreak havoc on our environment for decades. And uh, I got so much more information that you have to read my book to hear about that. Um, how many chemical spills and accidents in America is America exposed to annually, right? The U.S. is averaging one chemical accident every two days. Data collected by the Environmental Protection Agency is what's called the EPA. It's a nonprofit group that tracks chemical accidents in the U.S. shows that accidental release, be they through train derailments, truck crashes, pipeline ruptures, or industrial plant leaks and spills are happening consistently across our country. In the first seven weeks of 2023, this year alone, there were more than 30 incidences, according to the Coalition to, Pre to Prevent Chemical Disasters, roughly one every day and a half. Last year, the coalition recorded 188 up from 177 in 2021. The group has trailed more than 470 incidences since it started counting in April of 2020. Here's just a map right here. Look at this here. The map reports chemical accidents in the US created by the coalition to prevent chemical disasters. Red, icon, red icons indicate accidents from 1 January to 31 of December, and in 2022, 20, and purple icons indicate accidents since 1 of January to, to date in 2023. I mean, it's just, if you look where all these happen, you know, right up here is where I'm from, and uh, right down here is where I am now, and uh, they're all around us. There's no getting away from it. The East Palestine uh, derailment, here's some pictures. Here's a picture of the train derailment here on the left, and here's a picture of the fire that they actually set three days later to try to burn off some of these things. But did you know that um, if unless these chemicals are incinerated at a very high temp temperature, they make a, a byproduct called a dioxin, which is very toxic. They also turn into hydrogen sulfite gas, which turns also into phosgene gas, which was used in World War II. This disaster, East Palestine uh, derailment, had leaked over 115,000 gallons of these toxic chemicals into the ground. These toxic chemicals um, just got into surrounding streams and even into the Ohio River. This not only affects the 4,700 people that live in East Palestine, but over 5 million people who rely on the Ohio River for their source of water every day. The municipalities draw off the Ohio River, up and down that river. It goes on for miles and miles. Um, here's an example. I mean, there was 35, within days, they said there was 3,500 fish that died in these uh, lakes and streams. Um, and they never reported on that again, how many more have died. But it's just, um, <laughs> these pictures have a thousand words. Here's the different train cars. And here's the different chemicals. Look at the first five are vinyl chloride right? That's the vinyl chloride. And then you have all the other volatile organic compounds, the pro propylene, uh, polypropylene. It just goes on and on and on. And these things are what's leached into the ground and causing all the problems. This is a great slide of that example. All these leaks and spills have contaminated billions and billions of gallons of groundwater, including what once was pristine lakes, rivers, and streams. This not only affects the well water, it also affects your municipal water and the air and food, uh, the air you breathe, the food you eat. 
But did you know that, that our wastewater, if it's if it's uh, city wastewater, it goes back to the municipality that sends you your drinking water. So 25% of that water can be recirculated. And it's a constant, it's constantly coming back and forth and it creates, it creates a big problem. All right, this, this toxic chemicals disaster affects you in three ways, right? Orally by drinking it, you know, they tell us to drink bottled water and that would, could solve that problem. Transdermally through the skin in a shower, are you gonna quit taking a bath or a shower? I don't think so. And inhalation through your lungs, which our lungs become the filter itself when we're taking a shower or a bath from the steam that's coming off. Because the volatile organic compound wants the gas off, right? So it's getting into your lungs, not including the air quality. Until recently, scientists thought of the skin as being a total barrier. Most people don't realize how much your skin can, can, can leach in. And I'm going to tell you here. Uh, research leading to the success of transdermal patches for administrating therapeutical drugs we know that the skin's permeability has a lot to do with molecular weight. Scientists have graded the hydrogen atom as one on molecular weight, meaning it's the smallest. It's up in the top left corner of our, of our chart. And discovered any molecule below 3,000 will enter the epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin. Everything under 750, and we're talking about mole or dalt weight, right? This is what we're saying. Will enter deep into your dermis and uh, the mid layer of your skin. And anything smaller than 150 mole is going to enter your hypodermis, which is all the way to your bloodstream. So it's getting put through your body and it's very, very bad, right? Now, can you guess what the molecular weight of these chemicals are? Look at fluoride. It's only 19. Chlorine, 35.4. Chloramine, 52. Chromium, 6. That's from Aaron Brockovich movie, 52. Vinyl chloride, 63, which we know that five of those cars are vinyl chloride. Arsenic's only a 75. BPS is 58 to 180. That's a, a the plastic product that they make. Uh, it's non BPA, so it's BPS. Uh, butyl acrylate, 128. Glyphosate, which is Roundup, 169. Mercury, which we know is really bad, is 200. Lead, also really bad, um, 207. BPAs, what plastic products are made of and what comes off of most bottled water. 228, uranium, which we know is really bad, uh, 238, PFOFs, which are the forever plastics that we hear about, is a big molecule. It's about 500. Um, so that just gives you an example. When we talked about 3,000 will enter your epidermis, 750 will enter your dermis, and anything under 150 will enter your hypodermis, which is your innermost layer in your bloodstream. Um, pretty bad stuff here, guys. These toxic chemicals with a molecular weight of less than 3,000, uh, organic or inorganic from your tap water can easily enter your body through, remember, ingestion, inhalation, and transdermal absorption. Did you know that chloroform, and it could be any VOC, but we're gonna use chloroform as example, as a byproduct of chlorine, is inhaled and absorbs transdermally when you take a hot shower or bath, right? And the same thing with vinyl chloride, and same thing with these other chemicals we're talking about. It's just chloroform is the example. Showering in warm water also further opens the pores and the combination of what your skin absorbs and your lung inhales within a 10 minute shower is greater than the amount you would ingest in drinking just eight glasses of the same tap water. Most people didn't know that. They think, you know, they think if they just drank good, clean water, they'd have all their bases covered, right? Filtered water or bottled water. No, that's wrong. It's, it's, it's not at all. Over two thirds of the contamination your body's getting, you're getting it transdermally and you're getting it through your nose. Did you know that contaminated water can be prevented from entering your home completely? Our finely filter systems will clean, filter the water, healthify the water, make it actually healthy for you and make it safe for your whole family. Over the years, I'm a third generation plumber. I worked in some of the worst, as you know, I showed you chemical plants and I worked in a lot of uh, very um, challenged homes that had toxic chemicals coming up through their wells. And I met kids that had cancer and it was just, it was so, such an aha moment for me to be there and help out with these disasters. Now I know I need to get back in there again. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna show you here now how to make it clean and safe. Based on my knowledge and experience with over 35 years in the plumbing and water filtration business, 
my company, PH Prescription, has developed an effective water filtration system that will provide clean, safe, and even healthy water at the point of entry and the point of use. Let me explain. The point of entry is where it comes into the home, and the point of use is what's going into you, right, what you're drinking. So I made a dollhouse explanation of this here. And we're talking about point of entry. And here's the pipe on the left-hand side coming in. You see these two black tanks. Well, this was designed originally for my standard of care home filtration system. Tank one, remove all the volatile organic compounds that we just talked about. And tank two can also remove volatile organic compounds, but also removes heavy metals. In this case, we're going to talk about just getting rid of these VOCs. So basically, we take what's in tank one and we double it, right? So the point of entry, this is its second tank, it's a safety factor. I'll talk about it in a later slide. But we removed, just coming into the house, things like simple as chlorine, chloramine, volatile organic compounds like vinyl chloride, trihalomethanes, which is a gas that chlorine mixes with um, organics in the water, creates a gas and causes other issues. This water is then going through your hot water heater, your whole house, all your cold water bibs. So it's going to your, your bathtub, your showers, your sinks, your laundry, it's very, very important to wash your clothes in good water because your skin will absorb these toxins from your clothes that get absorbed from the water. People don't realize that. Even the sheets that you lay on are getting exposed to this crap that's in the water. So when you get in between those sheets, you're getting exposed to the stuff because it's absorbed into the material, the cotton itself. And then point of use is the drinking system that would mainly just be in a kitchen. Sometimes people put them in their bathrooms and they also have them at their bathroom sinks or they have a, um, a butler's pantry or other places or even an outdoor kitchen. They put them out there as well, right? Well, these systems here are much more fine filtration and they reduce things like fluoride, lead, mercury, chlorine, arsenic, chromium-6, like Aaron Brockovich, uh, cadmium, bacteria, uranium, radium, Volatile organic compounds like VOCs, uh, trihalomethanes, chloramines, even sodium, which is salt, nitrates, microorganisms, and even it'll remove pharmaceutical drugs. Well, people say, Leo, how's pharmaceutical drugs get my tap water? Like I said, 25% of our wastewater is recycled and made as tap water. So we take these pharmaceutical drugs, they get flushed down the toilet, and they get recycled back to us. They're not even tested by our municipalities, but they are there. And if you want to know more about that, Google pharmaceutical drugs in our tap water, and about every news network has done an article on this. You can watch uh, enough to know that you're very upset about it. So here's our pH prescription double tank VOC blocker. Now, if this is on a well, which a lot of them are going to be on a well, uh, you got to make sure that your well water is pre-treated. Like there's the iron levels are, are, are good. The pH is good. All these things have to be pre-treated. And most homes that have these problems already have home filtration systems. But most of these home filtration systems are not designed to remove volatile organic compounds like just happened in Palestine, East Palestine, Ohio. So that's where this double tank VOC blocker would come in, right? We have three taps on it. Tap one is going to let us know what's coming in. Tap two is going to let us know if anything is getting past tank one. And tap three is going to let us know if anything's getting past tank two. So here's how it breaks down. It's again a double tank system. Tank one's a VOC blocker. Tank two's a VOC blocker too, right? But it's a backup blocker when tank one fails. Okay, so tap one, we can test the VOCs that are coming into the system right from this is raw, right from the well right from your municipality. We'll know if you're still having issues, if these VOCs, you can watch them. You can test this monthly, bi-monthly, depending on how the system works for you. You can keep an eye on it. Your health department will do it, or I'm gonna give you some information on a lab, that, a local lab that'll do it for you too. And then once you start getting that VOC coming through tap two, that means this tank's exhausted, right? It's did its job. It's, 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 it's cleaned up as much as it could, and now it's bleeding through. Well, thank God we have tank two, because tank two is picking up that residual, what tank, two, what tank one did not get. So what happens is, when we started noticing a bleed through, we can, we can put a meter on this, and we can see how many gallons it took for this to happen, so we can be ahead of it next time, or we can do it on time. You know, it did take a month, two months for this to happen. Sometimes, depending on how much water you use, how big your family is. So what we do in this case is when this starts getting bleed through, there shouldn't be nothing coming out of tap three uh, that's toxic. You take tank two, which is still very clean, put it where tank one was, and we bring in a new tank two, right? We replace tank two with a fresh tank. So this solves the problem of uh, it ever getting into your house. 
So this is just a fail safe system. I mean, you could do it with one tank, it would save you some money, but you'd really have to stay on top of it. And you'd really have to know, you know, it'd be hard to know when it's going to bleed through. So this is the way um, most munis municipalities want it done. This is the way most engineers want it done. And this is the way I personally would do it. Imagine having finely filtered water in your whole home for cooking, laundry, shower, baths, and even brushing your teeth, right? pH prescription uses a mixture of proprietary medias, including KDF, coconut, and catalytic carbons to produce clear spring-like water for your whole home. Our whole home double tank VOC blocker is placed on your main water line, like I said, entering your home, and it's for removal of the 99.9% .9 of chlorine, chloramines, volatile organic compounds like vinyl chloride, trihalomethanes, pesticides, herbicides, and so much more. That's what these, they even removed the PFAS, forever plastic. It's ideal for wells or municipal water for just cleanup. And we have all types of models available. We go in all types of sizes, but you can always, I just want to put this, you can reach out to us at info at phprescription.com and we'll answer your questions, or you can always call us at the office at 772-220-8789, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so I'm giving you three options here for the whole home system for the VOC block, double blocker. And we have our, our, our base unit, which is, uh, it's a nine inch by 47 inch tank. Each tank holds one cubic foot of these mixed carbons and KDF. Um, it's good for up to about eight gallons a minute. Anything faster than that's gonna really put a strain on the unit. But so how's this for like two bathrooms? That would be a, a fair a, a analysis of that. Cause with two bathrooms, you can't over overload this unit. Uh, that's, that system is, and these, these prices are going to fluctuate a little bit, especially on bulk orders, especially through municipalities. But that system, if you were to call in today, it would run you about $14.95. Now, our second model is the uh, PHWH. WH stands for whole house. PH is our company. VOC, volatile organic compound. 12 is 12 gallon per minute flow rate. It's a bigger unit. It's a cubic foot and a half each. They're 10 by 54 tanks. Uh, they're much larger. It will handle up to four bathrooms. And that price on that unit would be roughly around uh, 1995, okay? So, and to go even bigger for houses with five or more bathrooms, uh, we're gonna do the PHWH VOC 18, and that's an 18 gallon per minute flow rate. That'll handle up to five bathrooms and you're around $2,500, but it's a bigger tank. It's a big 13 by 54 tank, which holds two and a half cubic feet of this media and will have more contact time and last a lot longer. Some people upsize so they can get better flow rates. And, uh, and then we have larger models available for commercial buildings, for, um, for very large homes. I've got some homes that have 11 to 16 bathrooms in them, and they would need a light commercial system, and we do that as well. Now, for your water testing, if you have this problem and it's shown that it's positive in your area, your health department's probably going to get involved with doing the testing. So they're going to do the testing between these different taps, right? But if you want to do independent testing, and I always recommend it's a good idea, you know, uh, don't rely on um, on these these agencies to to protect us, right? Um, I would do some 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 personal testing. One of the labs I like using is National Laboratories. And you can get to them with www.watercheck.com. And they're actually in Ohio, but they're licensed in all 50 states. They'll send you a kit and you take that kit and you fill out those, you fill those vials up, you freeze, put a freezer pack in the freezer, put it back in there. You overnight it back to the lab. They do all the testing for you. You can pick what test you want. If you just want VOCs done or if you want everything done, I mean, they, this lab will do just about anything you want, even pharmaceuticals in the water. So again, for reaching out to us about this, it's info at phprescription.com and our phone number is 772-220-8789. And let's get into the point of use. Uh, that was the point of entry. Now we're going to talk about point of use, which is a drinking system. And this is a a really quality reverse osmosis drinking system. It's a five-stage system. These first three filters, they remove sediment and chemicals like VOCs, and they go all the way down to removing you know, chlorine, chloramine. All these things are removed, and it protects this membrane. This membrane removes things down to one five millionth of an inch. So things that are really bad, like cysts, spores, and viruses and stuff, can't even get through this membrane, right? So you have a boil water alert. This is a very good system to protect you. So also, if you're told to drink bottled water because there's a VOC in your water, this system will also protect you. This system is going to protect, I would go to Mexico and hook this system up and drink their water. 
uh, it's how good it is. Uh, you know, it's just, it's one of our best systems for drinking. Um, it, it goes through these five filtrations, comes up through this lead-free faucet and goes right into you or your cooking or anything that you're using it for. Excellent piece of equipment. It reduces up to 99%, 99.9% of toxic chemicals. Like I said, chlorine, chlorides, chloramine, fluorine, uh, fluoride, heavy metals, volatile organic compounds, and 4,000 other toxic chemicals that could be in the water. This drinking system is ideal for kitchens and bathrooms, as well as medical facilities and offices. There's two models that we're offering here. One is a 50 gallon per day that I'd say would be good for two to four people in a household. And it's only about $475. And there's a 100 gallon per day system, which that you can have a larger family and you wouldn't you know, exhaust the system. And it's a little bit more money. It's about 525. But remember, they come with a lead-free faucet. And if you're interested in this, this product, uh, check us out, uh, reach out to us at info at phprescription.com or call us at 772-220-8789. And I'm gonna leave you with this here. Dr. Alex Carroll, amazing person. Um, he, kept, he kept chicken heart cells alive for like 26, 27 years. And chickens only live like seven or eight years. And, uh, and he did it by changing the fluid, right? So he says, it's merely the fluid in which it floats, which degenerates. Renewing this fluid at intervals gives the cell something on which to feed. And so far we know the pulsation of life may go on forever. Uh, he, he just said it right there, the cell is immortal, right? So what we're putting into us every day is so important that what we're putting on us or into us, that it's safe, clean, and healthy. And we will have a much better uh, opportunity and chance of living a better, cleaner, healthier life. Here's my science advisory team, uh, my health advisor, Dr. Jerry Tennant. He's in Texas. He's an amazing doctor. You can check him out. Dr. Nathan Bryan's a PhD. Dr. Tennant's an MD. Dr. Nathan Bryan's a PhD, and he's developed a lot of nitrous oxide products. He's one of the leading experts on nitric oxide and health. Dr. Deborah DeMarta is a colon rectal surgeon and an MD and a naturopath here in uh, Stewart, Florida. She's an amazing woman as well, and I'm glad to have all three of them on, on my team. Um, all of our products are NSF approved. The, the materials that we use, the tanks we use, uh, the housings we use, they're all approved by NSF. Uh, also, I've been a member of the Water Quality Association for 30 years. Uh, all of our products are made right here in the U.S. with pride and assembled right here in, in my manufacturing facility in Palm City, Florida. Um, we also have other products like H2 True, which is hydrogen tablets that you can put in your water and drink. We have Aquapellus, transdermal shower system. Check us out on PHP New on the PH prescription website. Uh, that's a really high-end shower system. So if you have any questions about our finely filtered water systems, please contact us, right? If you, just for a free consultation, we'll be happy to talk to you. And here's our number again, and here's our, our, our contact information for PH prescription. Um, if you like the video, please like and share it with so everybody can see it. The world needs to see this. Um, I just want everyone to stay well and thank you very much for your time.